Welcome to Living in the World International Church. We are here as doers of God's Word with signs and wonders following. If you want more information about our ministry, visit us at www.litweek.org or email us at info at litweek.org. You will never be the same again. Now it's time to listen to God's Word from Pastor Femi Alaren. Be blessed as you listen. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to our midweek service. I'm sure you have been having a good week and God has been visiting us with the divine visitation. This year is our year of divine visitation. No doubt God has been in our midst throughout the year of 2014. We're going to continue our series of teaching on knowing God. Last week we began the series of teaching. We began understanding God as a personality, not just as a crew master that sits in the heaven sitting on his reclining chair and yelling down orders to us to do. We find him as a loving father, a friend, a confidant, someone that we can speak to and talk to and discuss with. We can see from scriptures clearly from the books of Genesis, even to the books of Revelation, that God has the intention to develop a relationship, not just to give us um, a task to do or something to complete. In Genesis, the Bible tells us clearly that God comes down in the cool of the day to discuss with man, discuss whatever thing he wanted to discuss. They actually named the animals together. He brought the animals and then Adam gave them names. We find through the scriptures, God is constantly finding a way to create a relationship. He gave them the commandments when they came out of the land of bondage. He sent them the prophets. As a matter of fact, he sent us, he sent us his only begotten son to die for the sin of the world. So the whole point on, of these exercises or these things that God is doing is to for us to know him and have a relationship with him, not just as a God, but as a father. That's why when the Lord taught us to pray, he said, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. So he's our father, not just our God. So knowing God and having an intimate relationship is an integral part of our Christian work. Today we shall continue that series of teaching and today we shall find out how does God guide? How does God guide? It's important that we are guided by God or we are directed by God so we know that he's the one speaking to us part time. I know many of us sometimes get to a junction of our life and we are thinking what step do I take? Where do I turn? I believe today's sermon will be of great benefit to you and I'm sure by the end of the sermon today having direction of what to do next will not be a problem any longer shall we pray father in the name of jesus christ we give you glory and honor we bless your holy name we magnify you the king of kings and the lord of lords you are good you are kind your mercy is endured forever thank you for thus far you have helped us throughout the year 2014 thank you for the sixth month we are in right now we thank you that we are in the land of the living not in the land of the dead my Lord and my God, we just give you all the glory and praise for all the good things we have enjoyed, both tangible and intangible benefits. Lord, as we sit at your feet this evening to learn your word, I pray that you open our eyes of understanding in the knowledge of you. Give us revelation and insight. Lord, I ask even the things I have not prepared as a part of the sermon shall be spoken unto your people. Lord, destroy every form of darkness, every confusion, not knowing, not knowing what step to take. In the life of your listeners right now in the precious name of jesus christ we give you glory and honor blessed be your mighty name in jesus precious name we have prayed amen praise the name of jesus christ going through the scriptures you often find that jesus christ often used the word the kingdom of god is like or the kingdom of heaven is like and the essence of that statement is to introduce us to the principles of god while we're still here on earth if you read the books of Matthew chapter 13, often he compares the kingdom of God to a seed and all kind of things to a net and the rest of the stuff. You see, when we become born again, our spirit man is changed while our ideology is still the same. In the books of Romans chapter 12 verse 2, a very, very um, famous scripture that I often use because I love that scripture so much. It says we have to be transformed in our minds or else we will constantly fall short of his glory. I'm paraphrasing. He basically is telling us that we should be able to prove what is good, what is acceptable, and what is the perfect will of God. You see, when our mind is not transformed, we will always live below God's best for our lives. This is one key part 
of having your mind transformed. The children of Israel experienced deliverance from the hands of the pharaohs or the from the from the land of Egypt, which we can actually equate to being born again. And we translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. But many of them did not make it to the promised land, not because God did not have the promised land made available for them. The Bible says clearly in the books of books, uh, books of First Corinthians two verse nine, that eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, and not as he entered into the heart of man, the thing God has in store for those that love Him. Clearly, the Bible is saying there that God has finished the work; He's only getting the people ready to go and take over the work. In other words. The promised land was waiting, but the children of Israel were not led ready for them um, for the promised land. That's why in the books of Numbers 13, if you read carefully, when they came back from sparing, um, spying the land, um, they began to call themselves grasshoppers. These are people that witnessed God destroy the entire Egypt. All true mighty works, plagues and all kind of things took place. These, these are people that witnessed God parting the Red Sea. So, even though they have seen God's miracle firsthand, they still did not know the God behind the miracle. So, therefore, they are constantly um, rebelling against Him. Now, the question that is important for us to answer today in this sermon is how do you know God is guiding you? How do you know He's the one that is leading? These and many other questions boggle the mind of many because I've been in this shoe before. How do I know He's the one that is speaking to me? After all, he has promised in his word, Psalm 32 verse 8, he said, I will instruct thee, I will teach thee in the way thou I should go. I will guide thee and with my, with my eyes. So he's, he has a plan to guide us. He has a place for us prepared. But how do I know it is the one leading? Now, today I want to discuss certain principles of knowing how God guides. Certain principles of it. There is a part that we need to play and there's a part that God needs to play. And we must not mistake the two. Once we do that, we would then fall short. But we, once we can clearly identify the things that he does, many people will tell you we need to pray. That's good. Prayer is good. I love praying. But you see, no matter how many times you dial the wrong number, you won't get the right person. So if you're praying without the principles of God in place, you will simply be wasting your time in a room. Remember, he said the prayer of a righteous man availeth much. That means the prayer of an unrighteous man does not go beyond the roof of the room. In other words, each and every one of us must understand the principle that governs God's guidance. Now, today I expose you to about six of them. And then you can add more to the list if you feel like it, but I believe these six are concrete or are foundational to God's guidance. Now, number one, the first principle of God's guidance is that you must know God's word. You must know God's word. Remember, he says clearly in the books of Psalm 119, verse 105, he said the God's word is like a light, like light unto my feet and a light unto my pathway. Sorry, a lamp unto my feet. And a light onto my pathway. So you cannot sometimes expect God to guide you except you know clearly that it's God that is speaking because you will know from his word that you have an understanding of what he's saying part time. Let me give you an example. I met a, a young man many years ago, uh, early days of Christianity, and then he said that um, God told him that he's owing somebody and he should not pay. And instantly I said to him, that cannot be God. That you borrowed from a man and then God told you not to pay. He said it was God. I said, no, it can't be God. I said, he violates his words. His word basically says, a wicked man borrows and does not pay. So how can God now tell you that you should go and borrow and then don't pay? In other words, you are going contrary to his word, his plan, his purpose. No doubt God's principles remain the same, but his, his method might be different. But he will not violate his own word. He has said, I have exalted my words above my name. He has said in the scriptures. So for us to therefore now say God said I should not pay is basically lying to ourselves. The essence of the scriptures is that God's principles is communicated to us. Like I said earlier, his, um, his method might be different. 
For example, Jesus Christ opened the eyes of the blind so many times, but he used different methods. Sometimes he would tell them to go out, um, he would spit on the floor, wipe their, wipe their, um, their eyes with the clay, and they would receive their sight. Sometimes he would just send, the, he would just send the word. Sometimes he would just touch them. But the end result is that their eyes are open. But he's still applying the same principle that you must have faith in God. So each and every one of us must understand the principle that govern. If you don't know what God's word says, you cannot be guided directly. Because when you get to a junction and when you are hearing multiple voices, you will think it's God speaking, whereas it is not God because you don't know his word. His word is the foundation to his voice. You cannot accurately um, determine God's voice in a, in a crowd of people on a multiple of voices except you know his word. That's why it is, it is paramount or important for each and every one of us to make sure that we get acquainted, we get familiar, or we study the word of God carefully and diligently daily. That's how we can determine how we know God's voice. God's voice gives you peace in every anxiety. It gives you understanding, regardless, because you know that if he has done it before, he will do it again. Now, number two principle I would like to put across to us in the books of Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5, it said, Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Lean not unto your own understanding. In all of your ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. The second principle to God's guidance is that you are committed to God's will. You are committed to God's will. Is you are permitted to think. That's why God gave us a brain. I've shared my testimony before. For the benefit of those who have not heard me before. I, once I was I had a problem with the, uh, the door of my car. And I was struggling with it. Eventually I was laying hands, laying eggs, singing praises. But God told me, go and get a screwdriver. I ignored the voice. I constantly, uh, I was still praying. I was still sh um, shouting Holy Ghost and laying hands. Pour the anointing oil, lay legs. But nothing happened. But he said, get a screwdriver. And you know, eventually when I listened to the voice and I got the screwdriver and I unlocked the door, this is many years ago, and I basically um, figured around with a, a few of the mechanism within the, um, the door, it reset it back to the normal position. I closed the door. I was inside my house. I spent an hour, 20 minutes. And it only took me 20 minutes to fix the door. And when I got into the house that day, the Lord said to me, you have a brain, you use it. What I'm trying to get across, we are permitted to think, but God's ways or God's will should always be final. The best of our wisdom and logical thinking is no substitute to God's guidance. There is a way that cement right to a man, but the end of it is destruction. Proverbs 14 verse 12. There's a way that cement right to a man, but the end of it is destruction. There are many obstacles to, you know, obeying God's will at the particular junction when we get there. Many of us are blinded by our emotions. We are overwhelmed by our emotions. Some of, sometimes we rely too heavily on our intuitions. I'm not saying um, having intuition is wrong because sometimes intuition is the prompting of the Holy Spirit. But we must learn to separate good ideas from God's idea because sometimes we think it's right but we are going towards the wrong direction completely. No matter how fast and far you travel in the wrong direction, you can never get to the right destination. Sometimes we procrastinate. and Sometimes many of us want it now. We have uh, speed. We want speed. And God does not work with speed. He works with his own timetable. So you must, guess, you must uh, get in line with his own timetable. Because of instant gratification, many of us have forgoes, uh, forgone God's guidance so that we can have it now. I can share countless of testimony of those who chose not to wait on the Lord and go to the devil for their blessing. And they are paying a great price they wish they had known. Then the other one is that we also sometimes become overconfident. After all, I have a degree. After all, I have a master's. After all, I have a PhD. And all these things seem to be um, the factor by which we used to judge how God is speaking to us. This will get us in trouble. Remember, he said he confirms the wise. He said in, in God's foolishness, he's wiser than the wisest of men. 
some people you know place emphasis on other people's advice to adv uh, to validate their own preferred choice only to reinforce a bad choice or bad decision so i want us to understand that sometimes the things that we are thinking that we are doing is actually getting us into more trouble ladies and gentlemen the second principle is to wait on god be committed to his, his will that is the only way around it be committed fervently committed wholeheartedly you see waiting on god is not just staying in a room and waiting it's actually having a good attitude because see the holy spirit is constantly reporting back to the father what is going on on the, on, on the earth and telling him how you are fearing you want a breakthrough he wants to give you the breakthrough clearly the scriptures makes us understand that god is more willing to bless us than we are eager to ask of him but it's important that we obey his principle principle number three is to trust in god's ways trust in god's ways faith is an important factor when it comes to accepting god's wisdom faith is an important factor when it comes to being guided by god each and every one of us will be guided but sometimes we must trust god enough to follow his ways and believe that his ways will lead us to the destination or desired destination you see sometimes many of us are thinking of a shortcut and you think god's ways are too long or too far ahead and therefore we are trying to make corners or cut corners remember he said this in the books of jeremiah 29 verse 11 he said i know the plans i have for you declares the lord the plans to prosper you not to harm you plans to give you a hope and a future so he has a plan and is committed to it until you are committed to god wholeheartedly and believe him that he will not lead you astray you are not ready for divine guidance if you ask him to lead you then relax let him lead you know sometimes when you get on the public transport uh, many of us can drive a car we can drive buses and we can drive even lorries possibly the driver of the car is the one that is driving or the driver of the public transport is the one that is driving though is the one that is in charge of the car many of us in the cars can still drive but we cannot all drive at the same time so if you believe that god is the one that is leading let him lead and without you interfering with his leading don't struggle with the steering wheel of it with it well, what do you call it in his hands after all if it is one that made the heaven and the earth and made the rainforest and the rainforest and the wilderness i'm sure he can navigate through the wilderness of life so regardless of whatever you're passing through right now, believe God that is the one that can get you out of it and it can lead you to the brooks of waters. There are great benefits allowing God to lead you, allowing God to fulfill his purpose and plan for your life. It's very important that you accept God's wisdom and trust him that he will do what he said he would do. Now, number four. The, second, uh, the fourth principle I would like to put across is that you must learn to pray. The Bible says, ask and you shall receive. It says, seek and you shall find. It says, knock it shall be opened unto you. You must ask him for counsel. You must ask him to direct you. In the books of Psalms 25 verse 4, it says, show me your ways, O Lord. Teach me your path. Psalm 119 verse 136, it says, direct my steps by your word. And initially we told you that he will have you have to understand the word that's the first principle now you're praying and now you must pray and ask him ask him many people fail to ask him we are too um educated to ask god for help we are too intelligent to think praying is actually a solution to the challenges we are going through if you have tried everything else and it has not worked i think it's about time you try god and that's the only way forward try him find out what he can do for you no doubt he knows the world as a matter of fact he said the earth, he, he said the heaven belongs to the lord and the earth belongs to him too psalm 24 verse 1 he made it all the earth is the lord and the fullness thereof the world and they that dwell within it he made it all he also know where the hidden treasures of darkness is he says that in the books of isaiah 45 verse 3 so it's important that you begin to ask him for direction lord what way next or which way next lord do i turn right do i turn left and be sensitive i've had great encounters in this very very in this very area as i move into the fifth principle 
The fifth principle is to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. I've had great encounters like I was about to share. There are times in my life I'm about to say a word and the Lord will say, no, hold back your peace. Don't say, don't talk, don't say anything. And I'll find out later on if I've said those words, I will have, I will have done more damage than good. Remember in the books of Isaiah chapter 30, verse 21, Isaiah chapter 30, verse 21, he said, whether you turn to the right or to the left, your ears will hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it. That is the Holy Spirit speaking. One of the most underutilized personalities on the surface of the earth at this, at this hour, on this day, in this age, is the Holy Spirit. From the day of, the, uh, uh, from the day of Pentecost, he has been released onto the earth. And it's important that each and every one of us take full advantage of it. Because Jesus Christ said he will not speak of himself, he will speak of me. So he will reveal what the intent of, the, of, of Jesus is and the intent of the Father is to us. Let our heart be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Don't harden your heart when he's speaking to you. The Holy Spirit speaks in a still small voice in our ears. You see, one of the reasons why the devil shouts a lot is because he's far away. He speaks very quietly because he's very close to us. The Holy Spirit is close to us than we think he is. We just have to invoke him and let our heart be sensitive to him. One of the prayers I often pray is that, Lord, create in me a new heart. Destroy every stubbornness, every hardness of heart in me, every heart of stone in me. When your heart becomes a heart of flesh, hearing God and being sensitive to the Holy Spirit becomes a thing of delight and joy. Each and every one of us must de develop that, that um, ability to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. I clearly said earlier that for you to be able to design that voice is to actually be able to know that it's God is speaking through you via his word so you are acquainted fully with his word. Now number six principle which is the last I'm going to share for today is that you begin to move. Many of us have this prayer point, oh Lord please direct me. Then he will ask you where are you going? Where are you going? Imagine you walking on the road and you stopped a man and then you said, Sir, um, I need direction. The next question he will say to you or the next statement he will say to you is, Where are you going to? And then you say, No, I need, dire I need direction. He will ask you again, Where are you going to? Or where do you want to direct you? And he says, No, sir, I need direction. And then he will look at you and say, You're not serious. And then he will walk away. Why am I saying this? Whenever you're asking God for direction, make sure your, your, uh, your first step is moving. Because when you make mistake, then he has something to correct and tell you, son, you're going the wrong direction. Many of us have GPS system in our cars, or in the, for those in Europe, we call it sat-nav. And this, you see, the sat-nav, when you get on the motorway and you're driving on the highway and you're driving towards a particular destination, and you have maybe 30 miles to still drive on the highway, on the motorway, the sat nav keeps quiet, it doesn't say anything until you may be a mile or two away from that place and it begins to tell you that you're you're getting close to your exit. In other words, get ready to move to the uh, move to the uh, slower lane and begin to indicate that you're gonna be turning soon. The same thing with the Holy Spirit. When he's directing you, you must understand that because he's not speaking at every point in time, right? It does not mean he's not there with you. God does not speak to appease our anxiety. He speaks when it's time or when it's the um, direction that he wants to change. So you must understand that you need to take a step. As you are taking the steps, he will direct him. As you are taking the next step, he will direct you. As you are taking the next step, he will direct you. But you are not doing anything and you are paralyzed by your insecurities and your anxiety then the God cannot help you. That's why I want us to understand the principles of guidance, knowing how he operates. God cannot help you. He will simply be asking you, where do you want to go? My destination. All right, get up, start moving. Keep moving. Whatever it takes you, just keep moving. Like Matthew Luther King said, Junior, he said, whether you're crawling, whether you're running, whether you're on your knees, whatever it takes, just keep moving. You know, you're better off where you are today than you were yesterday if you keep moving only a stagnant water stinks and that begins to breed mosquitoes you know mosquitoes can be compared to demons so let's move on in our series of teaching now as i begin to close we need to understand what are the benefits of god guiding us 
after I'm putting so much effort and work into this divine guidance and knowing how to hear his voice and how God guides. Now, if you study carefully the books of Psalm 23, verse 1 to 6, Psalm 23, verse 1 to 6, it's very, very common. David is speaking there. He said, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me lie down in green pastures. He leads me without st you know, besides still water waters. Psalms 1 and 2. What David is saying there is that I have divine prov uh, pro um, provision once God is the one that is leading. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Once God is the one that is leading you, is your shepherd and is the one that is giving you direction, you can be rest assured that divine provision will be supplied. When God told Elijah to go into the, into the wilderness, um, that he would send ravens to he, um, feed him, everybody will have thought that is contrary to every economical principle that is in place. Because for you to survive in the days of wilderness, you must actually be in the city where the money is at, where the food is at. But God is sending you to a wilderness to go and live with wood. Snakes, rattlesnakes, and all kinds of deadly animals. Scorpions, hyenas. Is that where God is sending you to? But yet, there was water there and there was food being brought to him daily. You understand what I'm saying to you? So he make you lie down in green pastures when he's the one leading you. Number two, you can expect, uh, expect peace. You know, he said the peace of God will guide your heart. It's in Philippians 4, verse 13. When he's leading you, he will lead you beside uh, still waters. Still waters mean peace. There's peace around you, serenity around you, peace. You see, the peace of God is what we need in this day and age to guide us, to protect us, to keep us, to assure us. When there's peace, even when there's a tornado, when there's a storm around you, you are relaxed. Jesus was relaxed on the boat, even when his disciples were jittering, because he had peace, because he knew God was the one leading, he was doing God's will. Number three, you have divine confidence. Confidence means that in spite of whatever is around you, you know you will overcome. He said, yea, though, uh, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will have no fear for evil, for thou is with me, thy rod and the staff, they comfort me. In other words, he is the one that is defending you, he is the one that is protecting you. You can go to sleep. He is the one that never sleeps, nor slumber. Do not cast away your confidence, because there is great reward for it. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 35 tells us clearly. I want us to understand that when God is the one that is leading, and we know that he is the one that is leading, we can be rest assured that our tomorrow shall be alright. Irrespective of what the enemy is doing. He said, he prepared a table before me in the presence of my enemy. Thou anointed my head with, my head with oil, and my cord run it over. In other words, there is protection for you in spite of what the enemy is saying. No enemy can stop you. His presence go with you. He said, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I have no fear, for thou is with me. Divine presence. It is presence that chases away the mountains. Remember, the mountain, uh, the, the creek at the presence of the Lord. You can be sure when God is the one that is leading. Your life is no longer a trial and error. It's not um, whether it works or not. There's certainty of it. You see, it might look like it's a long period of time when you're looking at it from human point of view in terms of duration and time. That's why I talk about some people having obstacles of um, instant gratification. But when God is leading, you can be rest assured that he will lead you into your blessings. He's the one that knows where the blessings are. He's the one that knows what things are. Let me begin to close. Finally, finally. One major requirement for hearing God's voice is that you're born again. I'm a teacher of the word of God and I like to teach the truth of the word of God undiluted. It says this, my sheep hear my voice. I know them. They follow me. My sheep. My sheep means those who have committed their life on, in, in, uh, to me. Those that belong to my pasture. John chapter 10 verse 27. So the question I must ask you is, are you a sheep or are you a goat? Because there are many goats in the church. 
even though they are attending church please don't mistake attending church that you are being guided by God that's why the Bible said clearly that judgment will begin in the house of God where people are doing all kind of things all all kind of things but you must understand that when you are a true sheep then you're qualified for his guidance how do God guide number one are you a sheep are you a sheep if you're not a sheep then you can't guide you goats are too stubborn you chase them from one place they will turn back there you say don't go there that's where they will go to so I want you to genuinely as you're listening to me right now search your heart are you a sheep of God or are you playing games with him because you cannot be guided if you are not a sheep and then once you have committed your life unto him then begin to ask for the baptism of the Holy Spirit because when the Holy Spirit comes into you you become a new man remember Saul was given a new spirit he was given a new heart when your heart is changed and the Holy Spirit is inside of you and you're spending time with him you get very acquainted with his voice a newborn baby can hear the voice of his mother and turn his head why because he knows that's my mother speaking that's my father speaking even though there's a crowd of people that wants to carry him he always wants to be with his mother therefore once we begin to spend time with the Lord we begin to get acquainted with his voice and his method of, of speaking and his leading sometimes God treats individually uh, treats us as individuals he speaks to us individually in different ways some people he wakes them, up, wakes them up in the middle of the night some people he speaks to them in a the dream some people they hear um, audibly some people he will send a prophet to you to speak to you so as soon as soon as you begin to get acquainted with him you begin to know what method he's dealing with you remember the temple veil has been rent from top to bottom allowing those who are in the outer court to have access to the holies of holies to speak to the almighty god is your father as much as he is my father i want us to know him as god and i also want you to know him as your father because then you can have a, a relationship with him that goes beyond just attending church on sunday and hearing the pastor preach to having fellowship and quality time with him even in your own personal space i believe god has spoken to you today and i believe that you'll be taking steps towards the right direction if you believe that, let shall we pray. Father, we thank you for your word. Thank you because I know you have spoken to your people today. And I pray, my Lord and my God, that every confusion in the heart of your people is destroyed today, permanently, in the precious name of Jesus Christ. I pray, Father, that you will reveal yourself to each and every person listening right now. And I pray, my Lord and my God, that you will, they will know you as their Father, they will know you as their God, they will know you as their friend, they will know you as the comforter. They will know you as their confident in the precious name of Jesus Christ. And I pray, my Lord and my God, that every guesswork is destroyed in the life of your people. Their life shall not be a trial and error anymore in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I pray, my King and my God, that the words I have spoken today will not stand against them on judgment day. And I pray that God of heaven, they shall bring forth good fruits in their life to the glory and praise of your holy name. Thank you, the Almighty, for answering our prayer. We give you glory and honor. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Amen. Praise God.